Hello. I can't hear you. Uh, should be able to oh, do no. that. No. Yep. Awesome. Hi, hey there. <laughs> I see you're outside despite the weather. Uh, well, despite the weather, it depends where you are, right? Yeah. I'm yeah, currently yeah. in South Carolina, normally based in DC. Okay. Where are you? Uh, Oregon. So Oregon. definitely not taking a call outside. <laughs> I, I'd be wearing extra layers if I was. Yeah. The, um, so I have to ask, any relation? Oh, to the uh, um, yeah. yeah, violinist? Uh, not really. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, it's my husband's name too, so I cannot. I yeah. Cannot, yeah, but his sister believes, like she did some research, and there may be, and my husband thinks it's just wishful thinking. <laughs> I. Yeah. It's not that common of a name, and everybody has relatives, so. Um, yeah. The um, um, hello, you know, hello. I've got one of those friends who's like two hundred and seventy eighth in line for the British throne, <laughs> which means he gets nothing. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you can claim you're related mm -hmm. to you know, some yeah. royal blood, blood, like yeah. blue blood running into in your veins. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so it sounds like it's going to be a rather small round, right? Yeah, we were supposed to have a different agenda An for today, different. <laughs> and so I didn't set anything up because I was expecting this other agenda. So. Um, I guess we will just briefly go over status stuff to the extent that we can, particularly given that. Um... Yeah, so I think what we can do since we have, um, so forward looking, our intent was to have kind of like either a separate maintainer circle meeting or, um, yeah, that, that. So mm -hmm. basically alternating the, um, uh, every every two weeks, a standard uh, SIG contributor strategy meeting, and then uh, the alternating two weeks would be um, the maintainer circle meetings. So since you're here, uh, we'll pretend this is a maintainer circle meeting, which was planned to be, um, and talk a little bit about container D, maybe. Uh, not linker D, oh, excuse me. I was going to so say, I so was going to say, <laughs> is, you know, um, yep. So I'm just pink. Uh, also, Charles, who wanted to be here. So somehow, yep. like the meeting is not triggering notifications. So I've heard that happening recently. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I pinged him, and I hope he can join. But yeah. So yeah, I mean, like I was really excited. So I joined Boyand recently. Uh, okay. like a month uh, a month and a half ago um, and for me it's the first time working for a company that is also a maintainer of source um, of open source project uh, and one of the things that we're trying to do and I was like oh my god this sounds like this is some I think this is like a really good sig for us um, because one of the challenges we have is um, well we are a small company we're a startup and so we're Putting, and we put a lot of work and effort into Linkerd, but we also have to start um, um, working on stuff that we can monetize, right? So somehow we need to also, so what we want to do now is kind of help, help and Charles is uh, joining. Hey, Charles. Hey, Charles. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and Charles is a field engineer with Buoyant. Um, maybe, yeah, just, yeah. Oh, and, and before I said, like, I, I'm, 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 uh, head of marketing, so I'm on the marketing side, and Charles is a field engineer, so he really helps people on the technical side, right? And so one of the things that we want to do is like, okay, how can we engage the community more? Because it's a lot of the work 
has been done by people like Charles and some other people who are like really like writing content, uh, uh, being on Slack, helping out. And we want to incentivize the community to be more engaged because we're always, I mean, like, it's all about community and, 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 and open source, but people focus a lot on contributing code. But we want to say like, it's more about that. You know, it's also about, about helping each other out or like sharing their information. And we created like a, a program. Uh, we just launched Linkerd Community Anchor. We, we call it to tell people, um, uh, hey, if you have a story, we're going to assist you. If, if uh, you, you know, if you, your writing skills aren't uh, uh, that great, you're not confident if you haven't submitted a talk yet. And so I was wondering, so yeah, we're trying to think around those lines. And I was wondering if that is any, because I'm sure you discussed lots of different things, uh, but if that is kind of the stuff that we can discuss here too, is like how to engage them more. And it's like, because that's been always like the big challenge for us. Absolutely. So, uh, so what was the name of the um, project? Uh, Linkerd Community. Linkerd. Oh, the uh, uh, Linkerd Community Anchor. Anchor. Cool. Yeah, we just launched it, and the CNCF is going to uh, post a blog post on Monday. I think that we wrote up. But okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. and if you have um, if you have anything that you're interested in forwarding over to our list, um, we have a mailing list as well. Give me a second. Uh, it's yeah, it's higher up in the doc. Um, List.cncf.io slash g cncf sig community strat uh, <laughs> contributor strategy. Very easy to remember. Uh, um, but yeah, I think that um, you're you're touching on something pretty uh, pretty important um, around you know. So Josh and I are are both in the Kubernetes community as well as um, Josh has. Uh, had some time in the Postgres community as well. And by some time, I mean lots of time. <laughs> lots of time. <Yeah. laughs> lots of time. Uh, so the um, one of the big things that we have turned focus to community wide is is kind of like recognizing and enabling non code contributors, right? Um, and um, as a I'm also a Dex maintainer, um, which is CNCF Sandbox, and one of the uh, one of the things that we run into is we have a lot of folks that are um, are maintainers in the classic sense of writing code, maintaining uh, maintaining the project overall, um, and maybe a little less of the uh, softer program management skills, content management, um, and that's that's something that we're looking to fill the gap with. Um, I think that. Kubernetes has, I, I think Kubernetes has the mass to do so, a lot of these things, um, but considerations around, you know, like when I think of DEX, we're, we're spinning up a website or we've spun up a website and it's like, okay, who maintains this now? Right, like, do we have the skills within the maintainers to do that? Do, um, you know, thinking about um, information architecture, um, how do we get people to the places that they need to go quickly and easily, right? And, um, you know, in terms of sustainability, like I want to, everything that I do, I want to build more maintainers. Like how do I do that, right? Um, and also thinking from the, the field engineering perspective, because I'm former field engineer and solutions architect, um, I don't want to do that day to day. Right, like the your your primary driver is essentially building products and solutions for customers, right? Um, and and pushing that feedback into product roadmaps, right, or project roadmaps. Um, so how do we do that effectively, right? Um, so I'm just saying lots of words. Stop me, please. Yeah, the, um, <laughs> but but actually, more it's. Um, I actually wanted to back up and say, um, because Linkerd has been around for a while. Um, right, y'all are, are are kind of the first service mesh. Um, so, what is your current community situation? Yeah, I can answer that. And so, Josh, it's good to see you again. How, and howdy, Stephen. It's always always a pleasure to be on a call with yeah. you. Um, so, the current situation is uh, we we ha we're we're at the point where we have to be really engaged with folks from the, like the maintainer perspective and um, where we're, which is fine. That's what we want to do. We want to be the shepherds and the stewards to make sure that we have a healthy 
healthy community. And what we're looking to do with the anchor program that Catherine mentioned is to get, you know, basically ambassadors or captains or w w whatever the analogous term is to have folks who are, who love Linkerd, who want to use it and who are so excited about it that they want to share their experiences with it. And th that's our approach to growing the what, that's our current primary approach to growing the community. Uh, should this not give us the results that we want, we'll go back to the drawing board and see if we can figure out another plan. But this is, seems to be the tried and true approach. And so, um, yeah, we just, I forget how we discovered this, this SIG contrib growth group, but mm -hmm. um, this is certainly something that we could use right now. Um, we're using Slack and GitHub as our primary interfaces with folks. Uh, we have a discourse, um, but it just doesn't get a ton of traffic. It's mostly for Linkerd1 stuff, and uh, there's not a ton of Linkerd2 content on there. So things that we're thinking about are uh, as how do we get content? Um, and we've got a good plan there where internally we're having each of the the maintainers or contributors um, generate one blog post or one tutorial once a, uh, once a month. So that'll keep us, if, if nothing else changes, that'll keep us uh, going. We'll have one piece of new content for the next like 18 months. Um, but our goal is to grow that and to encourage folks again, who love Linkerd, like we don't want people, we don't want to, we don't want, to make or ask people to do something that they're uncomfortable with. We really want people who are excited to share what they're doing with open source technology, how they're integrating it with other pieces of open source technology and gluing these things together. And these are a lot of the conversations that I have with folks on Slack just as like DMs. Um, and they're saying, oh man, we just integrated Prometheus and Linkerd with Cortex and it's driving all of our metrics and it's super, you know, they're super excited about it. And so that's where we pick up on those cues and try and encourage them to get involved as well. So taking that, abstracting that away from, or taking the Linkerd part out of that, what we're looking for is just common patterns or even shared, um, shared thought around continuing to grow, continuing to encourage folks. Now I've said a lot of words, does that all make okay. sense? Yeah, so I mean, I guess, so one of my questions there is, I mean, Linkerd obviously has a user base, uh, both for Linkerd1 and for Linkerd2. How connected do you feel like you are with that user base in terms of, of them showing up on Slack or filing GitHub issues or other methods that you have two-way communication with them? Um, it's, I would like to be more connected and I feel like over the last three months, we've lost a little bit of connection. Um, and this is just based off of anecdotal things that I see, like fewer conversations in Slack, fewer PRs, fewer issues that are filed externally. Um, and I can dig up those numbers and the trend actually looks like we're right. But um, so we're kind of in this a strong course correction mindset mm -hmm. um, to, to get people engaged and get back. So I feel like we're in touch with um, a lot of, like we know what people want out of Linkerd. Um, where I think there's a disconnect is our roadmap and what people are looking for. And so that's that's a converse, that's the first time I've ever said that uh, at all. Uh, it's the first time I've ever had that thought. Um, so it probably is something I need to think about more before we go down that rabbit hole. But uh, the few we have a few folks that are just really engaged and then people that come in um, I think over the last few months they weren't getting the right amount of attention they would join the slack channel ask a question and maybe it took too long or maybe they never got an answer or, or and so they kind of just bounced out so that course correction work that we're doing now is and, and it's I don't even consider it work it's like oh, I see somebody's new in the Slack. Let me just go say hi, right? When they've joined, it's that kind of thing. Um, just to build that welcoming and like encourage folks to write, ask questions because uh, I, I am also the kind of person who's hesitant. Oh, like I will scour the internet for a an answer to my question before I am like 
before I'll go and join a Slack and ask a question publicly. And that's just my own like hangups. I want to, the other side of that is I understand it and I want to encourage people out of that. I mean, yeah. I, I think that, you know, I think that part of that is like, it's a good pattern and maybe I'm saying it's a good pattern because it's something that I do as well. Um, but it also starts to poke holes and kind of like your information flow. If I can't get the answer quickly, then that points to a, a, an opportunity for optimization, right? Um, I think that, I'm not saying that Slack or, or Discourse should be a, a last resort, um, just that uh, people should be able to self-enable um, essentially. So you mentioned roadmap and I was going to mention roadmap to you as well. Um, having a clear vision of, of what's next in the project is, is huge for a lot of people. Um, I'm seeing that you have 131 issues open on, um, on just Linkerd, Linkerd. I'm, I'm sure there are um, tons of that's, other repositories to consider, right? Yeah, um, that's Linkerd1. So Linkerd2, Linkerd, Linkerd2 is the one that is the most active. Okay, all right. And that one is 209, 209 open. Yeah, so like if you can, right. yeah. So if, you know, finding a way to kind of aggregate some of that stuff, get a better idea of, of, of who's doing what, when um, is, is helpful for users. Um, it sounds like just like, I know this, I know this problem too. And it's, and it's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a triage problem. It's a, um, it's a maintainership problem as well, right? So do you have enough? Right. And, you know, so I look at, I look at the maintainers.md as well as like adopters, right. Um, adopters are potential maintainers. Uh, yeah, that, that was actually a question I was going to have, which is a service mesh doesn't exist independently, right? So are there other organizations working on stack pieces that integrate with Linkerd? Um, not so much stack pieces that integrate with Linkerd. They are integrating Linkerd with, like I said, that, that Prometheus Cortex is a good example or li integrating Linkerd into a CI CD system like Fargo. We're seeing that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, the, the maintainers and adopters, that's, that's where uh, William, had, our CEO has been, that's kind of the path that he goes down as soon as he gets really excited when we add somebody to adopters and then he goes and like pokes at them to see if we can get them to do more than just add themselves to adopters. And that's, we've had some success with that in the past. It often involves bribes of hats and t-shirts, but it works. <laughs> yeah. Bribery yeah. is always great. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, cause I'm thinking of this because one of the things that we've seen is a more successful strategy with projects that originated with um, a smaller company as you know an internal main product to that company, right? And that gets very, very hard for those projects to get core contributors from outside the company early on. And yeah. so one of the things that we've seen that has worked better is you recruit contributors around the sort of fringe for the project, you know, integrations, plugins, UI stuff, that sort of thing. And as people build up experience and a commitment, they eventually get into submitting stuff to the core project itself. But it's very hard for people to start there um, as their first contribution. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think that we see that too. And then, and then overall, like from the, you know, the, the CNCF level, that is, you know, something that people look at deeply for, um, for graduation considerations, right? Um, is it is it company diverse? Like, is there company diversity, right? Um, so, uh, just staring at the maintainers, at least for Linkerd two, I see only one email address that is not buoyant right now. Um, so, yeah, I, that's pretty honestly pretty standard for um, a lot of these um, startup projects. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, because it's very. It's very different compared to the big company projects where the project is one of 800 different things that that company has. Um, the, um, so, um, but, you know, we're looking at some of these things, some of the other projects that are in your same situation and where they've managed to get traction is to bring people in through all of the sort of satellite stuff that makes the project work. Um, the, um, 
um, as a way of people building up experience and commitment to the project. Because ultimately, you're most likely to get people contributing to the core, et cetera, when they have a, a com you know, when Linkerd is important to them at work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And end users tend to be really good primarily for non-code contributions and for maintaining bits of stuff like um, I, I integrations. And it tends to be the case that you're looking for ISVs um, and similar, you know, people who might have Linkerd as part of a stack for more substantial contributions closer to the core. Um, um, just because of the time commitment involved. Um, right. The, um, so, um, but I mean, it sounds like part of it, you know, begin with which you're already addressing the Zenker program is, is kind of connecting with your users, right? Because you have your pyramid and the users is the broadest part of it and then contributors is is almost is always a subset of users if in users you include things like integrators and tool builders etc which i do um the um um the other thing that i'll actually ask is contributor path right like say you know um imagine um, I work for, um, what's a good example of sort of general integration? Imagine I work for Actuate and we've decided that we're going to offer something built on Linkerd for a customer. And there's stuff that we need that's currently broken or a to-do item in Linkerd. How clear is the path, right? Assuming that I, as a potential contributor, have the time to put in the work, how clear is the path for getting that contribution in? Like, like how difficult is it for me to figure out how I would contribute that thing? Whether or not I even can contribute that thing. Because one of the big obstacles that we have with the smaller company projects is this perception that the perception that if you don't work for company X, you can't contribute to the core actually exceeds the reality. You know, um, I was working with the uh, Kong folks on this and they like would desperately love more third party contributions to the core, but people don't even think they can do it um, uh, before they, you know, attempt it. So, yeah, that's that's a good question. Good. But I think um, we could make it easier. <laughs> and I think you could say that about any yeah. contribution path, right? Like we could make it easier. So. Um, and I've had thoughts around this recently, just about like a tutorial for setting up your development environment for Linkerd. It's certainly, there are enough moving pieces that um, it's not, it's non-trivial to set, set up a development mm -hmm. environment. So we could, uh, that's something Catherine and I can, can work through or even, but if we, if you don't mind, we'll bounce ideas off you of how we sure. can what the what the path currently looks like and then how to smooth that out and then the of course the takeaway from that would be we would put that into this sig like this is where we started as a community with linkerd for our path and then this is how we changed our contribution path based off of meetings for for uh this this sig and then put that into like a cncf blog post so um I could see that being a really effective exercise. And I think it would help a lot of, we're certainly not the only people who have this struggle. Yeah, I, I think we, we for sure crave um, user experience reports essentially. Um, and from the, from the project perspective, this is, the kind of, um, this is the kind of work that one people want to see that you're actively doing. So be vocal about it. Be vocal about like we have recognized that um, that there are ways to improve the, uh, you know, the way that we bring people into the project, um, but also like the the field engineering experience that you have is 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 really massive here, right? Being able to write, um, being able to write user stories, right, and feed that into the product roadmap um, and make that roadmap visible um, is huge to contributors too. If I don't know what you're doing, I'm I'm a lot le I'm a lot less likely to touch your project. Okay. Taking notes here. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's awesome. That's really, really helpful. Um, how do you do proposals today? <laughs> proposals in terms of feature requests. Oh, feature yeah. requests. It comes. They all come in through GitHub. Um, they'll. It, 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 and that's kind of the manual part where it's up to us to pick up on them. You should, we'll get some that just come in straight into Slack through issues and we have a template for a feature request for a GitHub issue. Um, but we also have people, the, the second most popular way is people will come into Slack and they say, hey, does Linkerd do this? Or it would be really cool if Linkerd does this. And so going back to what we were just talking about, about, about that contributor process. Our, our current process is to say, hey, we'd love some help with that. Would you either file an issue or if you want to pull, do, if you have time for PR, that would be great as well. That's our current process. And that's the one that I'm, I need to think through that it, Catherine and I can think through that I think that we could make improvements on. I have a question. I mean, um, cause it, You've been talking a little bit more about the technical part. Like, have you, do you know of any company that is organization that is like our size and has managed to do this um, successfully? Because it's like, of course, like you have like the big projects with the big companies behind them and they had the chance to put a lot of marketing dollars in promotion and you have like all these excitement and then you have these people like talking about it and so on. But for us, of course, we don't have that option. And uh, yeah, what I'm kind of trying to search now is like, okay, who is doing it right? Like who has figured it out? And maybe no one has, right? <laughs> but it's like, it was, that's why we're trying to do this anchor program and so on. But it's like, like who else has been able to engage and get people excited? What, what has been getting people to speak about it publicly? What are, I mean, yeah, like, do you know of any company? So that would be hugely valuable. Hi, Don, by the way. <laughs> Hello there. The, I mean, so maybe Amy, oh, hey, Don, maybe Amy or Don can think of somebody else. The ones that I think of that have been really successful were the ones where um, they managed to get other companies um, involved in core development um, I, in, in a substantial way, um, which part of it just depends on sort of what your technology is um, and where it is in the marketplace. Um, and that's not really, you know, um, necessarily a great example. I'm trying to think of, um, Yeah, I think so, you're right there, Josh. We, um, sorry to cut you off. We we oh, identified that as we identified that as being like the thing that would move the needle the most and the fastest for us is if we could mm -hmm. find um, a company, an external organization, like an end user that was available to dedicate mm -hmm. their engineers to building contributing right. to Linkerd. Yeah. So so I would say that you know. Um, one, if you are doing something for KubeCon and um, have not recorded your talk yet, um, include that as a call to action. Um, two, you have the you know you have the the TOC list, the the SIG contributor strategy lists at your disposal to kind of to help market some of this as well, um, and the end user community, right? So CNCF has an end user community exactly. Um, to, to raise these kinds of topics. Um, so, so there are a few avenues to go down um, in terms of building this out. I think, I think that you know, one of the best strategies is to uh, help people drink the Kool-Aid, I, I guess, and, and turn, turn them, uh, it, again, turn those adopters into maintainers um, because like, they're, you know, they're already invested in making this thing successful be it for their business or be it for the wider community. Um, and, and those are gonna be your strongest advocates for sure. Um, yeah, I was looking at who else we might have because I was looking at, you know, among the projects that were originally sponsored by smaller companies that we have in the graduated level. Um, I mean, Vitesse obviously comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, the, Vitesse um, has had some great stories lately. Yeah. 
And, you know, and they had real challenges getting other people involved in like major contribution stuff because, um, because bigly like they exist in the intersectional cloud native and databases and databases have historically, you know, pretty much with the exception of the Postgres ecosystem, been a story of single company projects. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the, um, and part of it was, I mean, again, but again, for them, part of it was honestly getting some other vendors involved, but getting a lot of end users involved, actually, from the look of things. Yeah. Um, so the um, I mean, because because they got Google involved, Google and Microsoft involved, which helped, but they also picked up on a bunch of end users and integrators because they've got Curex in there, and Slack, um, I uh, and Pinterest, um, who are making contributions to the project. Um, so, so I would also take a look at the um, general general fitness wise. I would take a look at the um, the CNCF graduation criteria. Um, and think about some of the gaps that you have in the project currently, right? So, you know, we, we had already mentioned it, but the, you know, the single single company maintainership is is, is one of the ones to think about and, and having, um, website looks great. I feel like I can move around and find what I need on it already um, from the, you know, the, the few minutes of searching around that I've done uh, on this call. Um, but I would, yeah, I would say, I would say definitely look at the graduation criteria. And I know that um, Josh, uh, you, Don, and some, some folks have written up documentation around governance. Yeah. Um, so stuff to take a look at too. Let me. Oh. Yeah, I don't. In the repo. I don't feel like governance, governance actually kicks in at a different level, um, which is, I think, a different level. Because because where governance becomes important for growing your contributor community is after you have that initial engagement, right? So yeah, I, I say that to say they they are incubating right now, um, right? And it's just something that should be yes. really on your roadmap, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The um, so um, the I mean, actually, I haven't looked at what they have for. I have no idea how the project is governed. The um, so dropping some links in Slack. Oh, we have a file here, which is well, you're required to. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I mean, basic, my... basic self selecting maintainer group. Yeah, and my, my biggest piece of advice when it comes to like recruiting the out, outside maintainers, and you guys might have talked about this before I got on the call, but. It really, in a lot of cases, boils down to like one-on-one -on -one hardcore recruiting of people um, and, and being really proactive about it with individual people. And once you get a couple of individual people that are outside of your company, then it gets easier to start to scale that and put some mentoring programs in place and kind of build up the contributor ladder, which is what the contributor growth team uh, working group looks at. But it's, it's honestly, it's, it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of convincing individual people that they really want to contribute. And that's, it, it's hard, but if you approach it from that, that direction, that's the best experience I've had. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, it's, and we are, I'm glad that we're having these conversations and I certainly don't want to hijack the entire entire uh, SIG meeting for for linker oh no stuff, it's fine but, we um, didn't you are our we, agenda <laughs> I was gonna say right we didn't the only stuff honestly the only stuff we had on the agenda was check-in about KubeCon prep so it's really not okay. um they're really there you know this was actually I think every other meeting we're supposed to leave at least half an hour open for projects to oh, come wow. by and ask questions so um so you are here. You did the thing. Great. Yeah. Yes. I, will, I, will, I will use we're my agenda. You're a very good agenda too. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, thank you all. Um, yeah, that's Don, you're right. I think, boy, it was it was certainly much easier when, in person when we could, uh, like it, KubeCon is the best example when I uh, would run into folks, run into users who are curious about Linkerd and then fast forward a year and they're, they have a, 
KubeCon talks about how they're using Linkerd in production. That's like, that's a really good feeling for us, but you're right. It's been a long, long road. It's been long, hard work. And so uh, to your point about it being difficult, these, the virtual interactions I've found have made it much more difficult. And this is probably my perception. I feel like when I'm DMing somebody on Slack, I'm one of about 18 to 23 other conversations that they have going on at any given moment. Mm -hmm. And, and my main, the main thing about that is I really feel bad about bothering people. Um, so, uh, anything that I can do to offload their cognitive workload would be great. At the same time, I, I want to get them involved. I want to get them excited. So um, that is just a big ramble about, I agree with you that it's difficult and there are hurdles to overcome in that regard. We all feel your pain, right? Because we've all, we've all been in this situation before at, at various times and various projects. So um, yeah, so we're here for you. We feel your pain. We're happy to help in any way we can. I think in some sense, like we're, you know, for every, you know, for every Kubernetes sub project or something that we may spin up, it's, it's a very similar situation where we have to do the recruiting, we have to do the one on one time with people, we have to think about um, the way that we want to market the, the sub project. Um, so like, you could you could see them as as, as many projects and in, in and of themselves. Um, I think, you know, I uh, very sensitive to the uh, very sensitive to the, the slack overload. Um, it's actually currently happening. <laughs> and um, what what is maybe a good task to do is think about the questions that you get on slack, right? Um, the questions that you ask and the questions that you receive on slack and say, um, did someone did someone come to me explicitly because I'm the only one who can answer this question? or because there aren't docs that explain that, uh, you know, explain that process well enough, right? And those are some quick opportunities for contribution there too, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, if you've, if you've onboarded, you know, one of my favorite things to do when like onboarding a new, a new team member is like, hey, you're now responsible for the onboarding docs, right? Like, you know, so, so pen and paper, uh, you know, anything that you notice that caused friction in your onboarding process, like, that's now part of the onboarding process. Like you should write that in. Um, so you know, putting putting the power in in, in a contributor's hands to 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 do that work um, is huge too. Yeah, and you can also sort sense. of I don't know pull people in and sneak them in in um, you know in little ways too. Like there's a you know a, a pull request and it has some I don't know some intricate something or other that you know someone else has some experience with and encouraging people hey can you take a review on this because I know you know more about I don't know Postgres or whatever than I do um, and so you can kind of like rope people in in little ways by just proactively pulling in them into things like answering questions on mailing lists little reviews on pull requests answering some hard question in slack and, and once people start to see other people answering those questions without knowing that you pinged that person and proactively asked them, that shows people that it's not, it's not just your company that is responsible for answering questions and reviewing all of the pull requests. Because if that's what people see, that's the expectation you set. And the more you can do to change it in small ways, that helps kind of make it easier to, to make it better in the long term. There, there are also, um, you know, more minimal permissions that you can provide to people. I think there's like a triage option um, on GitHub. So if you have repos that are, like you have a few repos that could use triage, right, as the, as the short version. So if you have um, people who have been commonly uh, committing code or you know non-code contributions, um, pull them in for triage as well. Right, or you can set up boards. Um, you don't have these; don't have to be repo pin boards, but you can set up uh, GitHub project boards, right, and assign permissions outside of the repo permissions, right. So that way, you kind of get around the um, uh, the the problem that you often run into, where you have a a repo um, scoped project board, and the only way for someone to actually maintain it is to give them. A, a host of permissions on that repo, right? So having an org level one or having several org level ones allow you to bring people in as um, kind of PXM types, right? And, uh, and and work on that. Yep, that's, that makes sense too, it's great. 
I have another quick question to Stephen. You meant that you said that, oh, if you have something, just send it to the mailing list. But the mailer list is like everyone who is in this, like, what do you mean? Like, for instance, with the anchor program, you said, oh, just send an email. So so I think, to, so we have, so the SIG itself has a, a, a mailing list. The TOC list tends to get a lot more traffic than we do. Um, and then there's also the end user group. Um, the end user group, we'd have to, Amy probably knows more about how we could activate that for you. Um, so I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, but Cheryl is the one who is, is running that. I'm, that, I'm just that saying, is Amy, legitimately you're the answer. The, no, yeah, no. okay. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Cheryl is the person to talk to for being able to work with the end user community. That is it. Awesome, thanks. Cheryl is my hero. Cheryl's awesome, yeah. yeah. And Cheryl like has the perspective of like working on, uh, you know, working on these projects as well. Um, so has some of that end user feel too. This open source way is very useful as well. It's I I follow that repository. I haven't visited it in a while, but that's uh, something. Yeah, I dropped the link to the guide about from users to contributors because it has some it has some good tips in there that might be helpful. Yeah, I should have shared general, this with that's Catherine sooner. That's a great a great resource for lots of stuff. Oh, let me get these links into the meeting notes. <laughs> So we don't lose. Oh yeah, sorry. I should have put them in the meeting notes instead of the chat. I was I was dumping in chat too. So it's so easy, and then you end the chat, and you're like, oh, where did my oh, links? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Zoom does. Oh, I feel like Zoom's part of the part uh, part of the family these days, right? <laughs> it is. It really is. <laughs> Spend more time with Zoom <laughs> than real people. It's good. It's good marketing. <laughs> well, I think that gives Catherine and I a ton to process and talk about for sure. Yeah. So I will definitely. The, uh, oh, go ahead. One of the things I would say is after you reach out to people like when you have some kind of a line of communication going on there based on something you said consider having an open roadmap session where you like invite these ambassadors and anybody that they invite and that sort of thing to have a discussion about roadmap and it can be a frank discussion where you can say hey here's a bunch of things that people are already working on here's a bunch of things that people would like to have, but nobody from Buoyant is working on, you know? So if you want them, someone else has to step up. Um, and here are the things that we have to decide, are these things ever going to be part of Linkerd, right? Because you have to, every project has to decide what their scope is. And that's, that's a process. You don't have to decide what your scope is just once, you have to decide what your scope is multiple times because the environment you're operating in changes and the technology changes. Um, the, yeah. um, and, you know, that both has is two things is one is it gives people a chance to participate in something, a chance to feel part of the project, um, and like they're being listened to, et cetera. And it gives you valuable information about what people are looking for. Um, I mean, particularly an environment where you're competing against other open source service mesh projects, product projects, right. And a big part of in a competitive open source situation, a big part of how you drive adoption is implementing the feature that the other ones don't have and that it turns out that people want. Um, yeah. I, I think the hardest thing that we have to deal with outside of like all of the many, many things in the Kubernetes project um, is uh, the, at some point, kind of like all of the responsibilities start funneling into um, the de facto roles for SIGs, right? So, so the the chairs and and technical leads, which means they're doing, um, you know, they're doing the technical leadership stuff. They're doing the the, the cherry stuff. They're running meetings. They're doing triage. They're building out boards. They're um, they're reviewing enhancements for for features. Um, so, you know, all of that. And you still have to decide what does and doesn't go in, right? We don't have a very good way of doing that right now. And um, I think it's easy to, 
uh, I think it's easy to say yes <laughs> and uh, and not realize that you don't because you've got all of the this you know these these other tasks um, occupying the mental space to be able to say like we don't actually have bandwidth for for this right um, and and being I, I think you know being able to be honest really honest about that stuff like one the roadmap helps because you can just look at it and go like this is just not you know, not in the cards for 120 or whatever release right um, but two like giving that opportunity by having the roadmap and saying like this is you know this is in the freezer the backlog or, or whatever like you can feel free to pick it up but no one will be there <laughs> to maybe um, to maybe carry it along. Um, so if you're comfortable, uh, you know, if you're comfortable engaging in that way, um, if this is a feature that is important to you, then feel free to carry it. Um, but being able to say no as a maintainer is so important. Um, yeah, I think I like the open roadmap session idea and I think there isn't a difficulty in saying no, <laughs> oftentimes. Uh, so, but I definitely take your point. It, it is, it's like kind of towing the line of making sure that we are addressing community requests and meeting project goals. Thanks so much for dedicating the full. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah. The, um, of course. Um, we've, got, and, we've got two in the books now. Um, yeah. Container D popped by first, and, and uh, yeah. we're, get, we're gonna get we're gonna all the Ds up. in here. <laughs> and, and by the way, I actually wanna reassure you, it's even not just the small companies. I will tell you that some of the projects that originated at big companies are also facing this particular challenge. Um, uh, you know, for Google, they're having this issue with the gRPC project. For us at Red Hat, we're having this issue with Cryo, you know, where we're really trying to diversify our contributor base and, and grow it. Diversify it by growing it. Um, the, um, so it's actually, it's honestly, it's a challenge for everybody, right? That, that some projects kind of manage to be in the right place in the right time to attract other companies that put a lot of time into open source and they get to advance quickly. And then the rest of us are like, we have to make this happen ourselves. And that's a lot harder. Now, scheduling note here, um, the next proposed maintainer circle would fall on November 19th. And I am assuming that all of you would rather be at KubeCon. Yeah, uh, the, the nod means cancel that meeting. Yeah, well, so, I mean, I think it looks like our next scheduled would be the fifth, no? For the maintainer circle. Okay, wait. The, the, well, the part where we would leave space open for folks to be able to come by and tell us stories. Although, sort of I don't know, actually, oh, right. wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, although actually, if we can Maybe. get enough of us together, having one of those during KubeCon wouldn't be a bad idea, particularly if we could make it after our session. Um, because we're doing, by the way, we're doing an actual session in the program on project paperwork, on all of fulfilling all of the requirements that CNCF expects in terms of, of paperwork, et cetera. Um, so That's having a... one concurrent with KubeCon that was after that, um, That's a later in the day session, though, right? Wednesday or Thursday? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't it's even looked at the schedule. It's midday on Thursday, so it's like 9 p.m. my time. Yeah, that's uh, so. I, no, I, I, didn't, I, didn't mean, yeah. I didn't mean immediately after that. I meant after that on the calendar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As um, in not before it, because I would want to plug it during the QA. Fair, God. fair. Um, so maybe we do a fast follow and the next. Um, the next uh, contributor strategy meeting becomes a maintainer circle meeting as well. And we just flip the flip the calendar. So that would be um, the, the one on the third. The third. third. Yeah. December third. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that gives us, um, you know, the, the the hope for this week, and I think all of us respectively got dragged into things. Um, 
<laughs> running KubeCon being one of them for me um, is uh, is doing a maintainer circle uh, on resilient on resiliency, right? So talking about um, uh, maintainer uh, sustainability and, and burnout, um, and it, it would be cool to keep doing something like that. But it would also be cool to get some some uh, tasks that fall out of the project paperwork session. Um, so maybe we do that one for, I, I don't know, I don't know yet. There's the inclusive naming one that we want to do as well. Um, and I think we're running out of days in the year <laughs> to do these with. <laughs> um, so, so chairs, um, I say chairs, yeah. uh, Josh, uh, you, Paris and I should get together and, and figure out, um, okay. the schedule for the next few. Yeah. Weeks. Are we, by the way, are, are we planning on launching an inclusive naming thing for CNCF? Uh, LF level. Um, LF level, more, okay. Yeah, more, more details soon. Um, working on that with Priyanka, Celeste, and a few other people. So. Okay. And Josh, you did upload our presentation, right? I, you aren't waiting for me to do that. I am not waiting for you to do that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, your scheduling options right now are kind of tracking towards like November 5th or December 3rd for being able to do like, you know, other meetings to take over. So, yeah, I would say that maybe we shoot for, you know, maybe we shoot for immediately after KubeCon and let the um, let the November 5th meeting just kind of be a, a wrap up as we go into uh, KubeCon. I am putting said notes over on the documents that we do not forget. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. I like this huge and hard to miss. Uh, that sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> No, do anything you can, but that sort of thing. Um, so. <laughs> um, all right, so I feel like we're good. Are we good? Is mm -hmm. there stuff we want to chat about before we go? No, other than just to tell the um, uh, Charles and Catherine, you know, you know where the Slack channel is now. Um, you can follow up on this. Keep us appraised of the schedule for the anchor program. Yeah, and we can yeah. definitely pump it how we can, you know, big, mm -hmm. big community hugs and wrapping around you. Um, so, yeah, let us know how we can help. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think on Monday, as I said, is going, we're going to have like a CNCF blog post. So I'm going to put all the information in the Slack channel and I would appreciate any little bit of endorsement and like, or like <laughs> push out or anything is highly appreciated. Okay, yeah, sure. well, let us know when it's posted so we can echo it. Will do. Thank you so much. This was so great. Really, really thank you. Emma. We are so excited we found this. <laughs> We're like, why well, do good. you know about this? Tell your friends. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to cleverly draft my tweet as we speak. Nice. <laughs> I'm I'm extremely online. I can... <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> to be fair, this is kind of a newer SIG that has kind of risen up and, and it's slowly getting going. So you're not oh. really no one has missed out on anything. You came at the right time. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, nice to meet everyone, and thank you so, so much, and we'll see each other soon, I guess. Yeah, right, thanks for coming. Good luck. See you online. Bye, Bye. all. Bye. Take care.